Hello, my name is Jonathan Ferguson, and this project is TPP vs. GPP, or Twitch Plays Pokemon vs. the Generic Pokemon Problem, where artificial intelligence is tested against the famous Twitch stream. So I'll start off by summarizing the Twitch Plays Pokemon stream for those of you who don't know about it. Uh, it started in February of 2014 as a social experiment to see if a crowdsourced attempt at a simple video game like Pokemon Red could be completed and how long it would take. And the programmer said he really just wanted to see what would happen when he put this thing online. So Twitch Plays Pokemon was a Twitch stream where users could control the player through the chat feature by pressing the command they wanted into the chat. <laughs> and as, as those of you who participated know, that this got really out of hand really quickly and it was kind of frustrating to watch at times. Because a lot of times the random input would send the player in the complete wrong dire direction and would undo a lot of the good things that players had done. Uh, but the the stream gained a lot of popularity and viewership peaked at 123,224 viewers on the sixth day of the stream. And a lot of these viewers might not have been participating but uh, quite a few of them were just you could see by the amount of input going through the program and this was uh, the eighth day so this was uh, when it had gained a lot of popularity and Twitch Plays Pokemon also set a world record for the most participants on a single player online video game where 1,165,140 people played over the duration of the game which took about 17 days to go from the beginning to beating the Elite Four at the very end of the game. <laughs> and as you can see from the quote in the anonymous user chat, um, man, this isn't a thousand monkeys at a thousand typewriters. It's 20,000 monkeys at a single typewriter, and half those monkeys are screaming and desperately trying to progress, while the other half throw shit everywhere. It's wonderful. So this just shows that even though a lot of people uh, got kind of frustrated with the game at times, it was still really impressive to see the random nature of this game get through and uh, win all the way to the end. So the question I asked is, can an artificial intelligence beat the crowdsourced approach that Twitch Plays Pokemon presented to the Pokemon problem, or beating the Pokemon game. So the first example of artificial intelligence playing a Pokemon game are the popular speed runs that are hosted on Twitch and YouTube. And these speed runs are computer programs that uh, play through the games very quickly with no human interaction. They're, they're so popular that they've started a new form of online betting where the users place bets on if and how long it'll take for these programs to beat the Pokemon games. And these <coughs> programs aren't really artificial intelligence because they don't learn as they go along. They're omniscient programs that have access to all of the memory of the ROM and they can use the random number generator manipulation to push results in their favor. And if something doesn't go the program's way, then it's easier for the program to just start the whole game over than it is to try and fix the issue that it ran into. So obviously they never learn. They just use their omniscience and luck to try and beat the game in one go with everything going its way. Uh, for example, one of the really popular speedrun programs, not only does it have to catch a certain number of the Pokemon Nidoran, but each one of those Nidoran has to have specific stats, and those stats can't be calculated until the Pokemon are at a higher level than when they are caught. So the program has to play the game all the way through until it can read these stats, and if they aren't right, then the game just starts over and tries to catch new Pokemon at the beginning, instead of going and finding new ones and saving the run. <coughs> and 
There's also uh, another example is linked in this YouTube video of another student attempting to beat the Pokemon Blue Elite Four using artificial intelligence. And again, this isn't really artificial intelligence because the program doesn't learn from itself. What he's done is he's created these very detailed and specific decision trees that help the program to decide what to do at any moment in battle. So again, the quote-unquote artificial intelligence of this program just uses the decision tree and as always a little bit of luck to try and beat the Elite Four. And this is a very interesting video if you have about an hour to watch through it. It's, it's really cool to see. So before I continue with the uh, how to solve the Pokemon problem, it, I think it would be useful to explain the Pokemon problem for those of you who aren't familiar with it. So the Pokemon game uh, came out in 1996 and it was a game where the player has a party of up to six Pokemon, which are pocket monsters, to fight other trainers with. When the Pokemon fight, when one of the Pokemon's HP goes to zero, then it faints and is removed from battle. The Pokemon damage the other Pokemon using these moves, and when a trainer is out of Pokemon, they lose the battle. And players take turns in battle dependent upon the Pokemon's speed stat. So, <coughs> of course, beating the entire Pokemon game is a little out of scope for this project. But a simpler problem to solve was laid out by a student at Ohio Wesleyan University. He stated that the Pokemon problem simplifies to, given a party of Pokemon and a map of trainers, can you get from the start position to the end position without having all of your Pokemon defeated in battle and continue your journey of catching them all? So what this means is you can simplify the battles down to pretty much logic states where the player wins against easy trainers and loses against hard trainers. And the way he proposes we do this is that the player is given one Pokemon named Ghastly, knowing only the move Self-Destruct, where the Pokemon destroys itself in an attempt to hurt the other Pokemon. The easy trainers are given a Pokemon that is faster than Ghastly, which is Electrode, also only knowing self-destruct, and the hard trainers are giving a slow Pokemon, Snorlax, also only knowing self-destruct. So what this means is whichever trainer goes first in battle is going to lose because their only Pokemon is going to destroy itself. And once it destroys itself, regardless of what it does to the other Pokemon, it loses first. It's also important to note that the trainers that the player's Pokemon Ghastly is ghost type, meaning that the normal type move self-destruct won't hurt it, so it can keep continuing in future battles once the easy trainers use self-destruct on it and destroy their Pokemon but do no damage to Ghastly. So the simplified problem that we wanted to use for this project is using a genetic algorithm or a genetic algorithm and wisdom of crowds, can we navigate through the area known as Viridian Forest, which is close to the beginning of the Pokemon Red game. So these trainers 1, 2, and 3 are randomly initialized as easier hard trainers given either the Electrode or the Snorlax Pokemon, and the player is given only a Ghastly knowing the self-destruct move. So potential problems with this problem that we could see off the bat were, first of all, a lot of the local optima that were present in the map. So what this means is, as the player is trying to get from this starting arrow down here to this exit arrow up here, you can see that it is a very specific path without even avoiding the trainers to go through the maze. The problem here is that there's a local optima in this area, a local optimum here, local optimum here, here, here. There are several places that a genetic algorithm could get stuck if the local optimum aren't taken into account. 
Another p potential problem is a lack of variability in the initial population. So the initial population will need to have a lot of variability in it because of the specific nature of how the trainer needs to get through the maze. So each area need, needs to be explored in the initial population so that the genetic algorithm can weed out the incorrect ones and continue on the good ones and build off of those. Another problem will be the length of chromosomes because the shortest path through the maze is 130 button presses ignoring avoiding any of the hard trainers which means that the minimum size of the chromosome needs to be 130 uh, characters in length and just the difficulty at the beginning of the forest where there's a tiny gap here that the player needs to get through almost randomly at the beginning for the genetic algorithm to improve and as we'll see later on this ended up being one of the biggest problems because it was so hard for a random generated string to get through this tiny gate here. So the genetic algorithm used was fairly simple. It was a straightforward genetic algorithm. The chromosomes used were a list of the button commands to get through the maze. So as you can see the example here, up, down, left, left, up, right. The fitness calculation used is the further the player gets in the maze, the better the fitness. So I started off with a fitness of 1 over x plus 2y, and later on, as we'll see, I changed that. But I started with 1 over x plus 2y because the layout of this map is similar to a computer monitor, where the location up here in memory is 0, 0, and it increases as you go down. So I needed to invert the X and Y weights so that fitness would increase as we moved up. And initially I thought that it would be harder to move up than it would to move over, so I weighted Y twice as much as X. I decided to use a tournament selection method because it avoids local optima. So the K tournament initially used was a K equal to 20 for a population size of 50. I also used a temperature style mutation rate where the mutation rate starts at 100 percent and then I multiply by a temperature value to decrease that mutation rate after each successful mutation. This again avoids local optima by keeping the population diverse at the beginning and as we uh, converge upon the optima, the global optima at the end, we stop mutating. A two-point crossover method was used as this keeps the best part of each parent and is a little better than the single point crossover method. And to keep the population size the same, I replaced the weakest two elements in the population with the new generated children. So this gets rid of gets rid of the worst chromosomes to make way for the new improved children. The wisdom of crowds algorithm I knew would be difficult because in this case the time is reliant upon how long it takes the emulator to run through the list of commands. So the genetic algorithm takes a very long time to generate the fitness and I knew that trying to do a real wisdom of crowds algorithm would just take too long. So to simulate a wisdom of crowds I took the most popular command in each place from each child generated in the final population to create a wisdom of the children algorithm which could be just as efficient. So what that means is for each chromosome in the last population in the last generation I took the most popular first, the most popular second, etc., and created a string out of that and ran that one to get the fitness. Uh, some more project details. The code was written in the Lua scripting language. The game is played through the Visual Boy Advance emulator, which, as you can see, has uh, Lua added to it. And the program, the 
GPP was set up by manipulating the memory locations in the RAM, as you can see in this memory viewer here. You can directly manipulate what's in the memory for the ROM. So, just a short demo. We'll go ahead and start the Pokemon game, and then we can start running the genetic algorithm. So, as you can see, he's already gotten close to getting through our little gap, but he keeps backing out of it. Here we go, and here's fighting a trainer, a hard trainer, and he lost, so the fitness was set to zero. You could see lost in the output down here. So as you can see, this takes a really long time to run. And there it just reset again, so it has the first two uh, chromosomes finished, and their fitnesses are calculated. So each one takes a few seconds to run. And the first time we do this, we run it for 50 population size and then 100 generations. So it takes a little while to run. And he's gotten nowhere near the end here at the beginning. Also, another note, you'll notice that when he exits through the bottom of the maze, he turns around and goes back in. I had to add that in, obviously, because it's a lot easier to exit through the bottom of the maze than it is to go up through where we need to go. So that's just a little added omniscience that I had to put in there, because the very first time I ran this program, he made it all the way back to the starting zone on the first try, <laughs> which was the complete opposite direction of where he needed to go. So that, that was completely necessary. So I won't make you watch much more of this, and I'll go straight into the results. So as you can guess, uh, the genetic algorithm wisdom of crowds approach, wisdom of children, as I said earlier, was very bad, and genetic algorithm by itself was even worse. So as you can see, we did have very little improvement throughout the population. Uh, we have two with, you know, five decimal places as the slope of this line. So it, we had a little bit of improvement, but my hypothesis was that the population size was too small and we didn't have enough variability to get good results. And the generation size was too small, and we didn't have time to converge upon the line. But first I changed the fitness calculation to just 1 over x plus y to see if that would give us any better results, and as you can see, that gave us almost no change. Just the y-intercept and r-squared values went up a little bit. Actually, r-squared went down a little bit in the new uh, fitness calculation. but the slope of the line is exactly the same. So I, I kept this fitness just to see what would happen, essentially. So and then I increased the population size like I talked about earlier. Left the generations at 100, left the chromosome size at 200 buttons, and the mutation temperature at 0.75. So each time we run a mutation, we multiply the mutation rate by 0.75 to decrease it a little bit. So this surprisingly gave us an even worse slope of the line. So I increased the population and the generation to very large values and this gave us a little bit better but still not as good as the first run. Also I increased the mutation temperature to 0.95 at the beginning so we can have more variability in the initial population. And it just did not work. This line is almost a straight line. So as you can see here, something strange in my experiments. The maximum is the same for all of the algorithms and wisdom of the crowds except for the base where it is very slightly higher and the average is also the higher for this. But it is also really, really poor fitness as completing the maze is a fitness of one and these are way off. So some possible improvements. Uh, 
one way this could be done is with the A star algorithm, which is a specific pathfinding algorithm. And we could use a pre generated list of blocked locations to check the neighbors on where to go in the maze. But this leads us back to omniscience that isn't really a AI problem, and this doesn't really solve the initial problem stated. So another possible uh, improvement would be to add local search to the genetic algorithm so we could search for better paths and discard the bad ones before taking the time to run them. Well, this could allow for a large population size and more generations, which could allow for a real wisdom of the crowd solution with the time that we save. So in conclusion, the genetic algorithm was extremely inefficient for this problem. The Twitch Plays Pokemon completed Viridian Forest in at least eight hours. And I say that because there's not a lot of documentation on the very beginning of Twitch Plays Pokemon. And I know they got past, they, they were in a zone past Viridian Forest at eight hours. And this algorithm got nowhere in four hours. So it's definitely worse than the Twitch Plays Pokemon approach. And Wisdom of the Children was only slightly better. The algorithm still got stuck at the end at the hard trainer, and the highest average and highest maximum were from the based algorithms Wisdom of the Children approach. And the big conclusion here was Verdian Forest was just too complicated to try and solve with this problem. Uh, there's a different route closer to the end of the Pokemon game with more trainers and less movement that would have been a better decision for this MP complete generic Pokemon problem. So normally I would ask for any questions, but anyone who has any questions can just post them in the comments. Thank you.